All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're going to do kind of a special episode. We're going to talk about uh, what we're going to do an experiment, right? So I have Kayla with me. So we are going to compare some uh, often burned woods, uh, different kinds of wood, different types of wood, yeah. and we're going to determine what, what are we looking to find out. Um, what type of wood burns burns the longest and the hottest? So we're so. looking for the, the most heat energy output and yeah. then what burns the, the longest. And so now we're gonna be using some pretty obvious choices here. So we, we, we kind of have a, a hypothesis already. We kind of know what the yeah. answer is gonna be. We're gonna kind of prove it. And so the three types of woods that we chose were pine. Uh, this is a red pine. It's a very soft type of pine. Uh, and then we also have some uh, cottonwood. And then what was the other one we had? Um, oak. Oak. So we have uh, two classified as hardwoods. A hardwood is is kind of what? what? What is it classified as or what? Usually deciduous trees are hardwoods and I mean they have higher densities and they're more durable and hard. Softwoods are usually coniferous trees, okay. ones that don't lose their leaves and they're usually softer, not as durable and they their densities are a lot lower than hardwoods. So. Right, and those are pretty general terms. There's there's obviously a lot of exceptions. For instance, cottonwood, what we're using today is considered a hardwood, but it's a very it's a very soft hardwood. It's one of the softest woods out there. And there are there are actually lots of uh, pine trees that are considered softwoods that would actually be harder than cottonwood. And so uh, there there that that classification is kind of a loose term whether we talk talk about softwood and hardwood. But today. Cottonwood, oak, and uh, our pine is what we're going to be using. We have designed this experiment to try to, uh, as best we can, now there's obviously a lot of variables here still, but as best we can uh, measure the heat output of these different kinds of wood. And so we have uh, split up and cut a bunch of small sections of, of wood of each of the different kinds, so the pine, the oak, and the cottonwood. And then we used a method to kind of get a a general volume of how much wood we have, yeah. right? So what was that method called? How do we do that? Um, it's usually called fluid displacement. Yep. It's we used a bucket of water and we drew a line to where the water, like the top of the water was, and then we dipped a bag of wood and then we marked um, where the water was then with the wood in it. And then we tried to make every single bag of wood displace that same amount of water. And so we ended up with a little piles of wood that were very close to being uh, the same volume. And so let me take you guys in here. Uh, we're gonna get a cast iron pot of water uh, set up on a stand in our fireplace. And I'll kind of explain uh, how we're gonna measure the heat uh, energy that, that is put out by the wood. Uh, and then obviously we can time each burn to see what we're, we're kind of measuring when the last, when we see the last flame, right? Yeah, as soon as the flame, last flame goes out, that's when we mark. That's when we mark how long it burned. Right. So we, we, we make a make a note on the timer when the flame goes out. Um, okay, so we, we're all set up here. Uh, basically what we have in the fireplace is a small stand. We have a five quart uh, Dutch oven, piece of cast iron pot here that's filled to a certain level. We just, I don't know exactly how much is in there, but we have a, a line inside the pot we've been filling the water level up to on each time. So they're all the same. I have a digital uh, probe thermometer. So the probe is actually in the in the water there. And once this gets to 58, we're gonna start uh, lighting our fire here. That's the, the temperature that we have been, uh, been starting each one at. And then we have our timer set up here so we can start our time as soon as we get the fire started. So I'm gonna get some wood put in here first. All right, so we've reached 58 degrees on the thermometer, so we're gonna go ahead and start the fire. And I just take a couple minutes here to make sure I have, you know, a good, good fire started on all the pieces. The first sample that we're starting with is our pine, and I'm just gonna keep adding to the fire as I have more room under the pot, so. So what we're doing is we're taking a, a temperature measurement at, at each minute for 30 minutes. So we're about to get our first temperature measurement here. We got our starting temperature, which was at 58 degrees, and we'll get another temperature measurement here, which is gonna be about 58.2. And we're just gonna keep letting this burn and keep measuring that temperature every minute. And 
we'll see how much energy that our water absorbs. So we're using the water as a way to measure the, the to absorb the heat energy from the flame of the of the wood burning. The energy is absorbed into the water, which then raises the temperature, and then we can measure that temperature change that way. There's no way to really measure the the flame, you know, the amount of heat energy put out directly, and so we need it to heat something up in order to uh, to measure that. So that's why we have a, the pot of water here. So we also have a, a moisture meter that we've been using. Um, all of our wood samples were fairly close in moisture. Okay, so that's 74. 110.3. Okay, it's out. So the flame went out at 23, call it 24 minutes, I guess. Uh, 184.6. 178.3. A one seventy nine. All right, thirty minutes, one seventy eight point one. We're gonna let this cool down and then get our next sample. All right, so we have a fresh pot of water here. Uh, we've actually it's been a couple days since we did the last experiment, so the cast iron has cooled back down to uh, room temperature, uh, and we have it filled up with uh, with cold water. So we're waiting right now for this temperature of the the water. Uh, we want to start at the same temperature, so we're waiting for it to get back up to 58 degrees. And I'm just going to start placing some of our wood in here. This next sample is going to be our cottonwood sample. Okay, what's that? 58.1. Yeah, this stuff, this stuff's burning really fast. 84.9, 85, 85. Well, we're gonna have to convert everything to Celsius. 117. It's at 145.5. One sixty-six point two. 171.2. 6, 168.9, oh wait, it's not there yet, 168.8, 166.2. Okay, so our next sample is oak, and we've got a new fresh pot of water, everything is reset, and we're just at about 58 degrees, so we're going to go ahead and start our timer, and then start the fire. Oak's a little harder to start. Okay, 66, 89, 90, 90.5. 130, just call it 134, I'm gonna take it out. 153.6, Yeah, I think I would call that at 26 minutes. It's just cold. 192.7. Okay, we're at 30 minutes at 191, 190.9. All right, so the results are in on our three types of wood. What burned the longest, what burned the, the shortest and the hottest, and we have all those answers for you between the oak, the cottonwood, and the pine. And so, uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, we kind of had a, had a good hypothesis of what the result was going to be, but going through this experiment taught us a few things about these different kinds of wood and how they burn and what that means for us, uh, for you know, for a family here that, that heats a lot with wood, especially in this new house. So, so we actually have two sets of data that we used. We, we went through this entire uh, experiment with each three samples, which each, each of the three samples, we went through it two, two full times. So we have two sets of data for pine, for cottonwood, and for oak. 
Uh, the pine, uh, kind of as we expected, it burns pretty quickly. It burns hot too. Um, and uh, then it kind of dies off fairly, fairly quickly. So you get a lot of heat up front from the pine. It burns very, it, st it started very easily. It, it started up really, really quickly. And then the fire died out uh, uh, fairly quickly. And then the temperatures kind of uh, uh, waned off. So you don't get as much heat energy out of burning pine, but it is a good, it still is a good burning wood. Uh, the disadvantage with pine specifically is it has a lot of tar and sap and things like that that ends up causing some, a lot of creosote buildup in your chimneys quicker than some of the other woods do. So they don't, it doesn't burn quite as cleanly, but it's still a viable source. The, the advantage of course of pine is that it does grow quickly. So if you have a pine forest or you're looking to be sustainable, you can use pine uh, as, a, as a good heating source, uh, you just have to cut down more of it and use a lot more of it than you would some of the other woods. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the, the deal with pine. Uh, I, do, I do like heating with pine. Uh, I like using this as a good startup fire. So we use that to kind of get things going. It starts up nice and quickly, gets the, the fire hot, and then throws some slower burning stuff on there uh, to kind of keep it running. So Pine, uh, still a good source, but uh, not, as, not quite as much heat energy as some of the other types of wood out there. So our first, what's considered a hardwood or deciduous wood, this is cottonwood. This is probably one of the softest um, hardwoods that there is. Uh, this, cottonwoods grow very uh, frequently around here in Michigan. We have lots of cottonwood trees. Advantage of cottonwoods is that they grow really quickly as well, and you can get a lot of wood out of a cottonwood tree. The disadvantage, as we saw in the experiment here uh, the, in the data, supports this. Cottonwood also burns very quickly. Uh, it does produce quite a bit of heat up front. We get a nice boost of temperature uh, at the beginning, and then uh, it, it just kind of dies out. Very similar to pine. In fact, uh, between the two sets of, uh, of data that we, we collected, the cottonwood and pine were, were very similar. They kind of bounced back and forth. Uh, cottonwood, also a good source of, of firewood, a good source of heat but you're also going to burn through a whole lot of it. And so uh, good seasoned cottonwood, just, it just burns. <laughs> it goes through like a match. I also noticed that it does leave quite a bit of ash uh, at the end when, it, when we burn it here. Uh, we do, again, same as pine, we do use some cottonwood to get fires going, kind of get a good burst of, of heat uh, on cold mornings and things like that. We've got some coals in the fire, throw some cottonwood in there. It goes up, starts really quickly. Uh, and then we'll throw some, some other, uh, other wood on there to keep it burning throughout the day or overnight. In our last sample, we have the oak. Uh, as expected, the oak is, contains the most amount of heat energy, which means that not only did it burn the hottest, but it also burned the longest. So we can kind of combine that data together to come up with the, the, uh, the, the theory or assumption or, or result that oak is a a hotter and longer burning wood overall, which means the most heat energy you're gonna get per uh, piece of wood of similar size to the others. Oak uh, disadvantages grows very slowly. Uh, so it takes a really long time for an oak tree. So in your lifetime, you're not gonna plant an oak tree and then, and then have something for firewood. Uh, unless, you know, maybe 30 years down the road, 40 years down the road, you're gonna have a decent sized tree for firewood. Um, whereas cottonwoods and pines, you know, you could plant in, in series every year and you could have, you know, after 10 or 15 years, uh, you know, maybe 20 years, you have some pretty good sized trees that you could harvest for firewood. But the oak's gonna provide you with the most heat energy. So this gives you the hottest fires, gives you the best coals because it's so dense. Um, it gives you the best coals in the fire overall and it's gonna be the perfect wood for those really cold days and nights, uh, throwing these these in uh, for overnight burns, you know, throwing a lot of oak in there. We, we pack our fireplaces full uh, of oak for, for those overnight burns uh, and then long days and things like that. Uh, oak is, is a great wood. Disadvantages for oak with, with, as far as fire is concerned is it is a little bit harder to get started. It kind of starts a little slower. So if you're looking for that immediate you know, warmth in the morning, uh, you throw some oak in there. Sometimes it can take quite a while before you get some good flames and it gets really going in there. And so again, I like to use some of those softer woods to, to get things started. So 
Uh, oak overall a great wood. There's lots of other um, good hardwoods out there um, that uh, we can find you know, in, in this area in Michigan as well as across the United States, of course. Uh, maple's a good one. Uh, ash is a good one, although we don't see a lot of ash trees anymore because of the uh, emerald ash borer uh, insect uh, infestation has killed off most of those. A lot of cherry trees around here, those are also very dense. Those burn really well. Elm is not too bad. Um, and so lots of trees that we can, uh, we can find around here for firewood, but there is a, it is good to know that there's a, a definite difference in what you're getting out of your work. Um, if I have to go out and cut a tree down, uh, it takes me this, just about the same amount of work to cut down a cottonwood tree as it does an oak tree or a maple tree, for instance. I have to haul all that wood, I have to split all that wood, the same amount of labor goes into it and stacking it and seasoning it and all those things, but I'm getting less heat energy out of it. And so overall you wanna you know, focus your efforts as much as possible on chopping down and uh, processing hardwoods, woods that uh, uh, will burn better for you and produce more heat. So. Hopefully you guys found that interesting. I know I sure did. Uh, it'd be nice to do a, a test between some other hardwoods. I think we'd have some closer results. It'd be hard to tell the difference in a 30 minute experiment. We might need to expand that experiment out to 60 minutes to do a test say between oak, maple, and cherry or something like that. I think those would be really, really close in their results. Uh, we chose some obvious choices here so we could see the differences. We could see the, uh, uh, the difference in the, in the heat output and, and burn times. Uh, more obviously so so is oak the ultimate wood is it is it is it the end all is this the best wood out there to burn what is your favorite hickory is it is it maple is it cherry is it some other kind of uh, of a hardwood what do you have in your area that you like to burn and why i'd love to hear from you guys uh throw that stuff in the comments down below so you can share with others on what your what your uh experience is with uh, burning different kinds of wood um like i said i my, my answer to that question is probably a combination of both but I certainly prefer uh, maple and oak uh, are, are my two favorites to, to burn, I think, overall. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video, of course. A lot of fun experimenting with burning wood, and hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And of course, if this is your first time to the SSL Family Dad channel, I'd love to have you subscribe, tag along. Lots of gardening and uh, wood processing. I've got to get a whole lot of wood ready for next year. So we're going to be getting the tractor on the woods and, and get some wood uh, pulled out. Uh, lots of homesteading type stuff and DIY things, repairs, anything you could think of around a small homestead uh, from a dad's perspective. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.